I'm so excited guys to bring to you today a new gadget for the S950. And this is made by a company called Reflux Music. The SCSI interface we're talking about specifically is a game changer when it comes to the Akai S950 because the speed that you'd be able to save at if this thing is what it's cut out to be is going to be phenomenal and quite frankly a dream come true. Imagine if you had a 950 and you could save at lightning speed. Imagine if you had the facility to emulate tons of discs. Back in 1991, you could only imagine <laughs> if you could save fast and have loads of disk space. In fact, unlimited disk space. Guys, this could be a game changer. Let's find out. So guys, there is a little bit of installation you do have to upgrade your EPROM chips in here. They do provide EPROM chips and the EPROM chips are basically 1.2B. So you can turn on your sampler and check. When you first boot the sampler up, it should say 1.2 and it doesn't actually say B next to it. So if as long as it says 1.2, as far as I know, this will work. If not, you can get the ROMs from them. That is the latest and last version of the Akai S950's ROMs. Once you've upgraded your ROMs, you then have to open up the bottom of the Akai. There's a little trap door at the bottom. You open up that trap door, and there's a couple of guide rails that you have to literally slide it in and connect the cables. Once that's all done, you're all up and running. I've made a full video on the journey of setting this up and everything. For those of you who want to geek out like me and check that out, I'm going to put that video in my Patreon, uh, free to all Patreon members on all tiers. So you can go there and join and show some love. That'd be really much appreciated. I work tirelessly on this video. <laughs> this is day two. You know, if you're getting anything out of this, at least leave a like or consider subscribing to the channel. It's totally free to subscribe guys and you'll be supporting me much more than you realize right guys let's get this thing on the bench and get this thing installed asap so we can see what is going on who do you saw home can't see their crew lost our job fellow two people queuing with moss in place viral clips flying all over the place life's too short i ain't feeling young so all i can do is make this song don't push me i'm close to the edge trying to hold on no Right, peeps, check this out. Switch it on and it says external SCSI hard drive. Oh my days. So now I'm going to get something to connect this to, find some SCSI leads and I'll be back. Potential for these gadgets is just unreal, man. This weird looking thing is a Raspberry Pi. For those of you who don't know what Raspberry Pi is, it's actually a little mini computer. But look, if you look on the top there, there's this thing called a hat. And this hat that I plugged into it, is actually what you call a raw SCSI. Now this is a hard drive emulator, which will fool this into thinking it's got hard drive on it. Then put all your images on here, your disk images, your pretend hard drives that it will recognize and save to. Guys, I've got the SCSI interface installed now into the S950. The question is, is it going to work? Let's find out. According to this, what you have to do is load from your floppy disk. So you go clear memory, and you loaded this, obviously selected disk first. Uh, I've got this lovely HXC emulator. So you hit the uh, load button, so clear memory and load disk. So now that's now loading. And as you know, it takes a long time for samples to load on the old samplers. So while that's loading, I'm gonna tell you about what this gadget is. So here we have a USB floppy emulator. Now this uses the USB floppy emulator, what it does is it pretends to be a floppy drive, but instead of it being a real floppy drive, it actually holds virtual floppy drive images. And this little cool gadget converts those images and the samplers kind of fall into thinking there's a real disk in there, but when really there's not, there's just a simulated metrics disk. So anyway, so that's in there like that and it's loading as it would. So it's loading all the aiming cuts and stuff. And as you can see, it's just the same speed and the same read speed as a floppy disk. So it's slow as ass. But what can you do, eh? This is how it is. 
Now, the benefit of having a, a hard drive interface on there is that you can connect SCSI drives and SCSI drives load much faster than your average floppy. In fact, probably 20 times faster. So stay tuned, let's find out and see how that works out, if it does at all. So next we go to the disk button and we now have to go to save that stuff that's on that memory onto our hard drive. So now we then go here and we have to then make a name for the drive. So for example, that's called Amen Mashup. So now we press the letter and now we have to just call this Amen. Well, probably wouldn't have enough characters for that, but let's just call it AM, AM, and then mash, M, A. This is like the old Nokia's, isn't it? S, H. They probably won't have any more characters than that. Let's see if we, you'll be lucky. Oh, 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 we get more. Look at that. Big up your chest. You got more. You and then pick what? Amen. Ma, aim, what was that? Aim our mashup. Aim our mashup. But you get the drift anyway. Then once you've done that, you hit the enter. And look at that. You rename that volume and it's given us an extra volume there. It says Amen mashup V3 or Amen mashup volume 3. Yeah. So now it's a, this here is simulated in the Matrix hard drive. And basically what that's doing is it's telling the sampler, you've got an old school hard drive connected to it, but really we know it's not. So anyway, it's connected, so it's falling in the machine. The machine thinks it's a hard drive on there, treats it as a hard drive. So now we scroll down and now we go to here and then it says volume 0%. Make sure it says volume 0%. Yeah, I don't know if you can get away with taking out your USB because you don't want to wipe over your disk because that will be a nightmare. But you could do a shortcut. You could try clicking this button and that will give you an eject menu. For those of you who don't have that, you've probably got these old school floppies still in there, still struggling along, still getting the old, bzz, 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 still getting the old memory freaking disk failing palaver. Where meanwhile, I just press the eject button there and I hit save. Now let's see how quick this thing saves. Holy schmicky schmock. That is like, what? That was like seconds. So guys, if you're enjoying this content, yeah, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. And let me know if you want to see a video where I'm going to test the sound on that. Because I want to do a test, right, to see which one sounds better. On my next video, I'll probably do that, yeah. Comment down below, which one sounds better? Is it going to be the Akai S950? Yeah, or is it going to be the Akai S3000? Yeah. We've got lots of experimenting to do, guys. If you're looking for a sampler, holler at your boy. I've got one or two here. I'm sure we could do it. We could do a little wheel and deal, you know what I mean, Dell. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget the full length version of the Raspberry Pi and Ras SCSI setup is going to be uploading to my patron. And that's going to be for all members. Join the Patreon and showing the support. All Patreon members will be able to see that video. So that's it, guys. Enjoy. Peace out.